All right, team, so we're back, of course, talking about some Final Fantasy VII, and we are once again discussing Crisis Core Reunion, and this is actually a bit of a follow-up to our last video where we kind of talked about the new trailer that dropped kind of surprisingly or whatever, because there's actually a small detail in the trailer that's pointed out to me that I've not seen anybody else discuss. I don't know if the devs have ever pointed this out or discussed this aspect of Crisis Core Reunion, and it says Zack has weapon proficiency when it comes to Crisis Core Reunion. And for so many reasons, this doesn't make sense, but also at the same time is very, very interesting, which we're going to get into in just a second. But quick shout out to Pedro Strife in the comments of my last video for pointing this out because I completely missed this. So this shows up in the new trailer at about 33 seconds. You'll get two like combat segments with Zack. And in the top right corner below the controls, you'll see Buster Sword Proficiency 3.30%. And again, for so many reasons, this just does not make sense. For starters, if you played the original Crisis Core, there was not weapon proficiency. For one, there couldn't even be a need for it because Zack doesn't even have weapons that you can equip. You're forced to have two separate swords in the game. You get the like soldier-issued sword that Zack has for the first half or whatever it is of the game until Angel dies and then he inherits the Buster Sword and then you're forced to equip that. When it comes to Zack's equipment in the original Crisis Core, it's just materia and accessories and that's it. Because, again, you're forced to have specific weapons depending on where you're at in the story, and weapon proficiency wouldn't make that much sense for this game just because you only ever have two weapons. It made sense in Remake, of course, where it was introduced, because each character has, like, six different weapons, right? And they all have their own, like, skill trees, essentially, and all that other shit, right? There's, like, a need for that. And, of course, the way proficiency worked in Remake is that you equip a weapon, it has a new ability, you got to use that ability so many times, and then you permanently learn it, and you can use it with whatever weapon you have equipped. And to be honest, I thought it was kind of a cool idea before we got the game, but once you actually play Remake, it's kind of a nothing feature just because it's so easy to learn the ability. Like, you can do it so quick, right? You just run around in an area with some random enemies, and you can get it in, like, five or ten minutes, depending on what the ability is, or something like that. If even that long. So it's almost a pointless feature, but I think in theory it's kind of good. They can maybe tweak it a bit in the future, maybe a little bit harder to permanently learn the ability or something like that. So the question then becomes, why exactly are we seeing weapon proficiency in Crisis Core Reunion, and is it anything like Remake? Because if, if you're not learning ability from it, from one of the weapons or something like that, then what the hell is the point of it? And what would the ability be that Zack learns? Because in Remake, Cloud learns Focus Thrust from the Buster Sword. So would Zack learn Focus Thrust in Crisis Core Reunion? But would that even make sense since there's not a stagger gauge and that's kind of the whole point of that attack? But also, would there even be a point in learning abilities considering that he only has two weapons? So does weapon proficiency hint at there possibly being new weapons for Zack to equip, or the, even just the ability to equip weapons at all? Like, can you go to a store and buy a new sword for Zack and be able to equip it yourself instead of just only materia and accessories? Maybe. The idea is very exciting, but the problem is that I think part of the reason why they opted out of the ability for Zack to get new weapons is because the sword is very important, right? He has the second-class sword through, you know, the whatever portion, half the game, whatever it is. And then when he inherits the Buster Sword, you're forced to equip that because that he needs to have that sword on him equipped to him for, obviously, cinematic cutscenes and things like that, but also to pass it on to Cloud at the end. So it'd be a little bit jarring, so to speak, if you had, like, some other new sword, I don't know, some sort of, like, flaming sword, we'll just use as an example, that you're using towards, like, the end of the game or whatever, maybe it's stronger than the Buster Sword or whatever the case, and then it hard cuts after Zack dies at the end and is passed on the sword to Cloud, and it's the Buster Sword that he has in the cinematic, which you just did not have equipped currently. It's actually one of the smaller complaints I have with Remake as well. It's not a big deal. I don't expect them to make a high-quality cutscene for every single goddamn weapon in the game, depending on what you have equipped. But if you ever pay attention, like, maybe you have, like, the Iron Blade or the Twin Stinger equipped, but when it goes to, like, one of the high-quality cutscenes, Cloud always has the Bust Sword. And I assume Barret and Tifa also have their default weapons and shit, too. And it's just a little bit jarring. It's just like, whoa, what was that? I didn't have that equipped. But then I, you kind of think about it and you understand that they can't possibly do that, and if they did, that'd take a lot of goddamn resources. And with the Buster being so important to the character Zack, I don't know if they would even want to have other weapons to use. They could completely ignore that, right? The aspect of the original Crisis Accord and just go for fan service and have additional weapons and the ability to equip weapons at all, etc., etc. But I guess that remains to be seen. I just, I don't know if they would do that. I don't know if they would add in new weapons. Now, they could add in abilities for the current weapons that he has, or maybe, maybe they add multiple abilities. Since there's only two swords in the game, maybe you have multiple abilities you can learn per weapon, potentially. I don't know what those abilities would be, though. And this whole thing is kind of based on whether or not we're all, like, mistaken or, like, a Mandela effect or some shit of there not being proficiency in the original Crisis Core. And I know there wasn't for the sword itself to learn abilities, but maybe there's, like, a mission that I'm forgetting or something that has, like, proficiency in it. Maybe you just got to do some shit with the buff sword in a particular mission. But I tweeted out about this a couple days ago, and nobody corrected me. I got some pretty intelligent people on my Twitter that know, like, everything, every aspect of the fucking compilation. Remember every goddamn thing about every game. And nobody's corrected me yet. So I assume this is a brand new thing. It is a brand new feature. And I just don't know what exactly it means. Because as far as I'm aware, they've never talked about this in marketing, right? Because you would think this is kind of a big deal. If they're adding weapon proficiency in Crisis Core, the, a reunion that didn't exist in the original Crisis Core, that's a big fucking change. And what does it do? And are they just trying to keep it secret? So it's a big surprise and everybody plays the game? I don't know. But also, if they're trying to keep it secret, why do they put it in a trailer? 
I don't know, it's very confusing, very exciting, and since there's now weapon proficiency, apparently, does, I mean, is, is that something from Remake? Do, is there possibly weapon cores, too? That'd be, that'd be kind of cool. Imagine that. Imagine if we got into Crisis Core Reunion, and you actually had, like, a weapon skill tree and shit like you do in Remake. Man, that'd be crazy. But again, this is all kind of based on whether or not we're misremembering stuff from Crisis Core. I say it all the time, it's been a while since I've done a full playthrough, and I don't even know if I've ever fully done all the missions in the game. Because back when I played Crisis Core a lot, when I was like a teenager and shit, I wasn't really a completionist like I am now. Like, when I play a video game, I want to try to do everything. Back then, I didn't really give a shit. I would do some of the side quests and stuff, some of the side missions. But I was more so focused on the story, unless I wanted to grind a little bit of levels or something, or whatever the case. So, unless there's a mission in the game where you do something for proficiency for some reason... This has got to be new, right? You guys would know this. You guys can correct it in the comments. If that's all it is, then that, that sucks that it's not a big deal or not anything new. But at least we have the answer. Part of why I don't think it's from a particular mission is just because when you watch the gameplay that I showed earlier, there are two completely different settings. For one, it's like a tropical setting and or like a village kind of setting or wherever it is and you're fighting Sharon soldiers. And then the other gameplay is Zack fighting a guard scorpion in when it's like a different time of day. It's like sundown or something and you're also like in a warehouse or whatever. I guess theoretically it could be from the same mission and like the warehouse guards were open segments taking place later on in the mission when the sun's going down or something. But just looking at the two different like segments of gameplay, it seems like they're in different settings. But I think we're going to start wrapping up the video. It's already over six minutes. I didn't think we'd be discussing it this long, but once I start recording, it's a little bit exciting. So what is this, my dudes? You guys let me know. Is this something from the original Crisis Core? For one, if you played the shit out of Crisis Core, was there just some sort of side mission or something where you did some sh sort of proficiency bullshit with the bus store for some reason? I don't know. And if it is new, what the hell do you think it is? What are we doing with proficiency in Crisis Core Reunion? Does that mean there's more? That's the video, my dude. Subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. Social networks in the description below. Follow me on Twitter, Dash Naved YT. That's it. Bye. Used to care what people thought, but now I care more. I and mean, nobody out here's got it figured out. So therefore, I've lost all hope of a happy ending. Depending on whether or not it's worth it. So insecure, no one's perfect. We spend it with no shame. We blow that. Like Coltrane, we in here. Like Logan, or leave it. Like Cobain.